In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3.2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. In question eight, we have a vector question. Uh, first thing I want to uh, point, you, point out to you is um, I've wrote this in, I think it's called column form. So this, they gave us minus 2i plus j plus 4k. I'm just writing all the i's as minus 2 on top, j's in the middle and k's on the bottom. That's really the only difference there. It's just a little easier to write. So they gave us all this and they told us that the line L1 passes through B, the point B and the point C. These are the position vectors of them. Uh, find a vector equation of L1. So the vector equation of L1, we, we always write F, uh, equations of lines. Uh, we use OR, it doesn't really matter what you use. I assume they'll take any, uh, any letter you want. Um, but OR is equal to something and we'll fill that out in a moment. I'll, I'll just do a quick drawing over here. If you think of zero zeros down here, what they've given us is three point. By the way, this is three dimensions. So I, I'm not gonna be able to draw three dimensions. So it's very rough what I'm doing. Uh, so what they've given us here is uh, three points. We're, we're only interested in B and C for the moment. So they've given us the point B or a vector to it. That's this one here, uh, B. And they've given us a point C or a vector to it, and that's here. And they've told us about a line that goes between these two points. So how we define, define a line in vector, um, in vectors, um, is we basically explain how to get to any point. So if I want to explain to get to, say, this point here, I, from zero, we start at zero, we get onto the line, so find a vector that gets you to the line. So either of these vectors will do. That's a C there, sorry. So let's just pick B. Um, so this line is defined by, first we get to the line, five, two, zero. And then once we're on the line, we can get to any point by just finding a vector that's on the line. In this case, BC is on the line. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that here. Um, so I could get to C by going to B and going BC. I could get to this point down here by going to B and then going, say, 1.7 of BC. That'd get me here. Half of BC would get me here. BC would get me to C. Um, OB plus minus uh, 4 BC would get me somewhere up here. So I can get everywhere on this line by just going to the line plus some number. Uh, we usually use lambda. Um, a vector that's on the line. So we really just need a vector that's on this line. So, and again, BC is that vector. So let's find BC, I'll do it down here. Uh, BC is equal to, um, and it's just equal to, so how do you get from B to C? One way is to go from B to O, B O, and then go plus O to C. But BO is just the same as minus OB plus OC, or that's also the same as writing uh, OC minus OB, sorry, in vectors. So what's OC is this minus OB, that's easy to take away, eight minus five is three, five minus two is three, minus three minus zero, minus three and, and that's your answer to part a there's many other answers by the way you could have also instead of going using this you could use this one here so instead of five two zero you it's okay to have eight five minus three it's fine instead of a uh, three three minus three that's um this vector it's okay to have a another vector for example um perfectly good answer is this one here eight five minus three plus some other letter, um, mu is often used, 
And uh, instead of this, how about minus one, minus one, one? That's perfectly good as well. Instead of going three, three, minus three, this is going a third of the length this in the opposite direction. Like these are, these are both going in the direction of the line. And there's infinite other answers, by the way. You could have a, a two, two, minus two. That's perfectly okay, and so on. Uh, obviously, most people should have this one or uh, probably plus one, plus one, minus one. That's, that'd be the most common. Okay, let me clean um, this off and we'll do part B. In part B, they give us another line, L2, and they give the equation of that line, um, as we see here. And they ask us to find the coordinates of the point of intersection between L1 and L2. Now, two lines aren't guaranteed to hit in three dimensions, but we'll, we'll go ahead and assume they will hit because they told us to find the point of intersection. So how do you do that? It's, we simply put this equal to this, just like we do in uh, coordinate geometry in two dimensions. Um, uh, this line equals this line, find out when they agree. Uh, we can do that uh, a little easier by cleaning this up. Instead of writing it like this, we can also write this as five plus three lambda. So that's five, three times lambda, and adding them together. Uh, two plus three lambda, and uh, let's see, what's that? Zero minus three lambda. So that's the vector of every line, every point on line one. And doing the same here, we get minus two plus three mu, uh, one plus mu, and four minus two mu. So when did these equal each other? We'll put these equal to each, equal to each other. And what we really get is three equations. We get the top of this is equal to the top of this. The middle is equal to the middle, and the bottom, the k part, is equal to this k part. So, and that will give us three equations. Five plus three lambda is equal minus two plus three mu. And we'll get three of these equations with two unknowns. So we can solve this. We don't need all three though. We can go ahead and just use two of them. Um, so we'll use the second one. Um, I'll, I'll write it as three lambda, but I'll bring the two over the equals. That'll become minus two. Uh, minus two plus one is minus one plus mu. And again, this five will bring it over and it'll become minus seven. So we just solved this. It's quite easy one to solve because these match up. We get, uh, let's see, the bottom take away from the top. We get zero is equal um, minus six plus two mu. We get mu is equal to, bring that over and divide by two, we get three mu is equal to three. And that's pretty much it. You put three back in here and we would get the answer of uh, minus two plus nine is minus seven. Uh, one plus three is four. And four minus uh, six is minus two. That would get you, that is the correct answer, by the way. But I would, I would advise you to be careful at this point. Um, because you would also get an answer if these lines never hit each other. That's why I brought it up earlier. Um, so you do have to be careful that they both fill it in on both parts, that they both agree. So you know what mu is, find out what lambda is. Uh, let's see, this line here. Three lambda is equal to two. I think, uh, yeah, uh, lambda is equal to two over three. And we put this into this one here and see if we get the same answer. Um, by the way, this should be a plus seven. So we get five plus three times this is two. That's a seven as well. Uh, two plus three times uh, this, so two plus two, that's four. And we get three times this is two minus two. So we get minus two. They both agree, so they do actually hit each other. But again, be careful if you're ever solving something where you don't know if they hit each other. Because you'll always get an answer by just combining two of these lines. But depending on which two you combine, you'll get different answers. Okay, uh, let's clear this off and we'll do part C. Okay, part C, uh, they tell us there's a point D and it's on L2. So I left the line L2 here in its most simple form. And then they also tell us that AB equals BD. Be very careful here, there's no vectors. This is the length between AB. In fact, I, I wish they had have 
put something like this here, just to make it a bit clearer. The length from AB is equal to the length from BD. So find the position vector of D. If we try and draw this situation, we know where A and B is. And we know everything about A and B. Um, what we don't know is where D is. But this sort of tells us something. It tells us the length from AB is the same as the length from BD. So if really we draw a circle around here, well remember, it's actually a sphere. We're in uh, three dimensions here. And we also know D is on this line. So if we put a line through here, we get a, we get actually get two answers, although that's a bit confusing later, because we only get one answer. Um, and that's because it doesn't actually look like this. The line looks like, that's true here. One of the answers turns out to be A. The exam, the, the answer uh, scheme seems to say, ignore that one. It's not right, but they don't take marks away from you. I see, no, I see nothing they've told us that doesn't let you say D is the same as A, because it, it answers this part, definitely. Um, I guess the only question is, is A on, on this line? I think it is, uh, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. Okay, so how do you answer that? Forget the whole A thing, forget the cheat way. Let's try and answer this as if um, we're just gonna get a couple of answers. So what we need to know is what is the length of AB? Because we, we can find everything about AB. The AB vector is just equal to B minus A. The B vector minus the A vector. And we don't have to write the O's every time. And that's just equal to five minus minus two is seven, um, seven, one, and minus four. That's that vector. The, the length of this vector, uh, let's go here, AB, um, again, I'll put these lines around it, is simply the square of all of this uh, square root. So seven squared plus one squared plus minus four squared, all to the square root. That's 49 plus one is 50, plus another 16 is uh, 66. Square root of 66. Okay, that's fine. But we also um, want to know about BD. How do we get BD? Um, BD is equal to D minus uh, B. Problem is we don't know D, we're looking for it. But we do, we know D is on this line. This is every point on this line. So instead of D, we can just write this here. Um, just for some number we don't know yet. We can go ahead and keep mu, but you can put any letter you want in. The D vector, which is minus two plus three A, um, take away the B vector, which is five. So minus two minus five uh, gets uh, minus seven plus three, again, we'll just call it A. Uh, one minus two is minus one, plus uh, any letter you want, A. Same letter, <laughs> same letter each time. Then four minus zero is four minus two, A. That's, the, that's a vector for BD. We just don't know what this letter is yet. Uh, but we can go ahead and get the, um, do the same things we did here, the length of all of this. That's this squared. Uh, I'll, I'll put in a bit of a mess here and um, then clean it up. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put it all here. I think we can understand that. Uh, minus seven plus three A squared uh, plus minus one plus A squared plus four minus two A squared. And all of this is in a big square root. We can uh, clean some of this up. We can get a lot of things out of this. Um, we're gonna get lots of A squares. 3a squared is 9a squares. This will be a squared here, 9 plus 1 is 10, and we'll get another 4a squareds. We'll get, in total, we'll get 14 a squareds out of all this. And um, a's, we'll get 3 times uh, 7, 21. 7 times 3, another uh, minus 21. So that's minus 42. We'll get uh, minus 43, minus 44. Uh, we'll get um, minus 52 minus 60. We get minus 60 A's if we do all this out. And the numbers, we get 49 plus uh, one is 50, plus 16 is 66, uh, plus 66 out of all this. But we know that this length is equal to this length, because that's what they started off telling us. These two lengths equal each other. So we get, um, 
yeah, let's pretend there's a big equals here between them. We'll just square both sides. We'll get 14a squared minus 60a uh, plus 66 is equal 66. They just cancel, equal zero. We can take a out of both these, 14a minus 60 equals zero. This is where I get one of my answers. A is equal to zero. Um, if I put zero in here, I get minus two, one, and four, which is the vector for A, which um, should answer the question. I, I think that's a perfectly okay answer. A is zero, but it's not the one they wanted. There's another, even another more interesting one, but perfectly okay as well. And that's 14A is equal 60. That's A is equal to say 30 over seven. If we put that in here, we should get what they're looking for, OD. So OD is simply equal to when 30 over seven is put in here. So that'll become, um, let's see, minus two plus 90 over seven, one plus 30 over seven, and four minus 60 over seven. Clean all that up, this is a minus 14, um, plus 90 is 76 over seven. Uh, this is 37 over seven. And this one will come out to, uh, let's see, minus 32 over seven. Let me just double check my notes on that one. See if we got the right answer. 76, 37, and minus 32 all over seven. Yeah, that's the answer to part C. And yeah, that's the answer to all of question eight. That's a mess, I apologize for that. Uh, I'm not good at controlling uh, my board space too well and vectors just take up so much space. So it's okay to have questions relating to this. Um, also, maybe I made a mistake. Um, and as I said earlier, be warned, you get multiple answers in the middle of these questions. It's okay if your answers are different. You can have um, multiple different, you should have this vector here, or maybe have it a bit more spread out, but you didn't have to use A, uh, and certainly you should get the same answer out. You know what, everything I have on the board now, you should have, uh, pretty much. But still, ask me whatever questions you want in the comments. I'll do my best answering. Thanks for watching, have a great day.